You know, if there is one thing that is going to cause a spur of backlash or controversy within the anime community, it's critique. We all have critiqued something before, whether it be a movie, music, a story, or some piece of art that has required us to invest some form of time into it. Animation as a whole has always been an art form that has come under critique. There are still people who don't understand its value, which is why we have people like Mr. Del Toro still speaking up for it with the animation is cinema phrase. However, while there is a bigger picture to talk about, today we are here to discuss the issues that I personally have with critiquing anime, especially especially when looking at the community. Here's my thing. Naturally, I would expect anime to be critiqued no matter how good or popular a story will be. There is no perfect anime in my opinion, but only the anime that people find perfect for their taste and hearts. The enjoyment of the medium comes down to the simple term of things being subjective. Everyone has their own taste, likes, dislikes, and expectations, and all of it is subjective per person. With this line of reasoning, you think that critiquing anime within the community will be something so simple that it wouldn't be worth blowing a fuse over. Yet, yeah, I would argue that the way critiquing anime has evolved over the years has gotten so annoying in the ways it can be done that you can practically categorize the different approaches. These approaches, outside of the genuine constructive criticism, are just ways that turn away the casual audience from the conversational engagement and overall does more harm than good. I want to first point towards the main type of critique that I see the most and cause the most discourse with the critique of opinions. When I think of the word opinion, the obvious thing that comes to mind is that it's a take that is not my own and therefore I may not align with my own ideas. Which naturally is okay. We live for the debates and disagreements because that is what fuels our passion as fans. There will never be a time where everyone will share the same opinion and at the bare minimum should be common sense. Of course, for anime fans, we unfortunately have mental gymnastics. People in the anime community love to critique people's personal opinions about an episode or writing decision as if that person was stating their opinion to be some form of objective take. Granted, there are individuals out there that do try to push their agenda as some form of objective truth, but majority of the time, it boils down to somebody speaking what's on their mind. While this shouldn't be an issue, it especially becomes one when it's over a popular series. Imagine you saw somebody who was watching watching Attack on Titan for the first time, tweet out that they did not like a certain writing decision or plot twist within the final season section of the series. That person is going to be met with people bombarding them asking about their reasoning and from there it's a downward spiral. If their reasoning doesn't align with what somebody else believes, it just leads to constant back and forth about who paid attention more or the classic you just didn't understand it bro comment. Worst case scenario, your opinion is belittled and you are discouraged from speaking your own opinion because somebody else has gone out of their way to make you feel weird about the show you just got into. You see what I'm getting at here? People cannot stomach other people's opinions and it blows my mind because why on earth would anybody expect one of the most creative mediums to have uniform opinions? Understandings, interpretations, reasoning, they're all subjective thoughts that differ amongst everyone and I feel like people have forgotten that it's okay to let somebody else have their own opinion. It's only worse for content creators unironically because the people who tend to have the larger audience and reach are the ones the anime community tend to label as trash opinions and there is this silent grudge against them. I don't agree with a lot of the trash taste opinions on anime but I'm sure they wouldn't agree with some of mine but we are all different people with our own different levels of appreciation for the medium, so naturally, that is the way it should be. Now before I get the comments about it, yes, I do think there are things such as bad takes, especially when somebody is blatantly ignoring the events of a story and spreading false information. But what I'm toggling on is the simple expression of one own thought process that can come under scrutiny and borderline harassment because their opinion may not align with the large majority. Anime is going to continue to bring in more and more new fans, and I think it's important to not discourage them from speaking their own opinions just because you have this anime veteran ego. Not everyone will grow up with the big three. Not everyone will know what some of the most notorious manga and anime are. Not everyone will simply agree with you on writing decisions or plot developments and it's because of that that you need to keep open-minded about the different types of opinions that you may come across. Now if you thought that's bad enough then how about the critique of one's enjoyment? Yeah this is where the anime community is now and I wish I was making this up. This is arguably the dumbest and most I want to cause problems form of critique because there have been people critiquing others for simply enjoying anime and don't let people's ratings get involved. Listen a lot of people watch anime because they like the medium, they grew up on it, and they want to be able to watch it on a very casual basis. With that, you're going to see a lot of people that simply enjoy a majority of the things that they watch. Anime reactors especially are these types of people because they aren't going to react to things that they would not enjoy even if it is a popular recommendation. However, there are people who critique others' enjoyment and taste in the medium because they either like a certain series or enjoy everything that they watch and because it doesn't involve this constant nuanced criticism that the community yearns for, many are frowned upon. If you are a new anime fan and you said in 2023 that you enjoyed things like Fairy Tale or Sword Art Online, may God rest your soul because people are not going to let you enjoy things in peace. There'll be people foaming at the mouth and questioning how could you enjoy something so quote unquote painfully mid it should be impossible. Yet just like my first point, it's a matter of opinion. Enjoyment is subjective and it's something that should yield to nobody. If I say that I like something then that's that. I'm not gonna argue with a random Twitter user about why I like something as if you're gonna talk no jutsu me into your line of thinking. There is also this very 
cringe stigma of thinking somebody enjoys mediocrity or has no taste because they have a profile picture of something like Black Clover, for example, on social media, and that by far is peak anime community trash behavior. Now, when you enjoy a show, at the end, of course, a lot of people give it a rating, and this is where the salt really comes out from people. Ratings have been a thing that I have strayed away from over the years because people flip out over a 7 out of 10, and at that point, I knew it's better for me to say that I either enjoyed something or not and just keep it pushing. My anime list has been at the center of it all, as for some reason, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood cannot be dethroned. Like, I'm pretty sure Attack on Titan, Bleach, and Oshinoko had number one for a small time frame, and fans insta-bonded to restore balance to their personal force. Personally, ratings on my anime list really do not matter. At the end of the day, the anime that are rated highly can be looked at as a form of recommendation because if an anime is rated highly, then there is surely a good reason. However, if you don't have a popular series rated highly yourself, then people will take it so personally. Again, I say that enjoyment is subjective. If somebody likes a series that many rate lower than a 5, but puts it at a 10 for them, then so be it. I think this especially can be seen with the divide between manga and anime only fans. Anybody who's been here long enough knows I absolutely love My Hero Academia. I still love it as much as I did when I watched episode 1. Yeah, as an anime only that went to manga reader, things have definitely been split down the middle. With anime only folks, they loved Villain Hunt, yet for manga readers, a good chunk really hate that arc for its faults. Yet even as a manga reader, even after listening to all the complaints and frustrations people have with the arc and quite frankly Act 3 as a whole, I still enjoy the series and rate it highly because my enjoyment is my own and it's as simple as that. I don't have to yield my enjoyment for the series to appease others because being honest with yourself at the end of the day is more important than anything anybody could ever say to you. People tend to forget that their enjoyment is the most important aspect when it comes to anime because they are in this community full of hypercritical thinking and it sways them and this is by far the most obnoxious form of critique there can be. Talking down to somebody because they enjoy something you don't is extremely lame behavior and this entire section of the video can simply be summed up to let people enjoy things in peace especially when it does not bother you. The final piece of critique that I have come to observe a lot is the critique of the technicalities. This is more so talking about the critique of certain aspects within the animation process, those who critique that and the backlash that comes with it. There are so many things that contribute to the process of getting a singular episode of anime ready. Accumulating talent and time, storyboarding, layout, composition, direction, and the list goes on and on. On top of this, there are many people who like to learn and invest their time in this process. Many of them Sakuga enthusiasts and others just folks who like to learn about how this medium has come together. Because their interest is more technical, however, a lot of their critique is about what may have gone wrong within an episode and this has certainly rubbed people the wrong way. If there is one thing an anime fan does not want to hear about, it's something not looking right within an episode. A lot of anime fans think that when a person is critiquing one of those aspects of an episode that I mentioned earlier, they are either being a straight up hater or they don't know what they are talking about. Now of course, nobody likes to see negative comments, trust me, I get that, but the reality of the situation is that the anime industry is slowly but surely cracking. Eventually, it will collapse on its own because of the amount of time and workload given, it's just not sustainable for the amount of anime that comes up per season and let alone an entire year. Feel free to go check out my buddy Asa's video with a link in the description for a more in-depth conversation about this. Furthermore, the more a studio takes on big projects, the more that strain becomes on animators. Looking at Studio Mappa, because there is no reason why they should have taken up JJK, Chainsaw Man, Attack on Titan, and Jigo Kuraku within a four-year time span. Jigo being the weakest show yet, and as I was constantly saying, the workload will eventually catch up to them because there were people already spotting red flags back in the trailer and they were definitely right. What may look just fine to you may not look the same in the eyes of people who are keen to noticing inconsistencies in production aspects and that critique is something the anime community cannot digest. To give an example, just recently, the episode of Demon Slayer that had Tanjiro's Hinokami Kagura Sun Dragon Halo Dance had people really pleased with it overall. However, there was somebody who I won't name due to the harassment and death threats that they have gotten, mind you, who critiqued the storyboarding aspect of the episode. The reaction was of course straight up harassment. Instead of people trying to learn what a storyboard even is and what this person may be even complaining about, they mentally shut down and go for straight up harassment and that is just not the way. Again, I get nobody likes to see their favorite being talked about in a negative manner, especially when the product looks perfect to you, but if you, at the bare minimum, don't even know what they are talking about and let alone have something to contribute, why not just keep scrolling instead of threatening somebody over anime? You could argue that because somebody is posting something negative, they should expect it back, but guys, seriously, harassment over fiction? Please go touch grass or get some therapy. There is a reason why people cover the animation process. There is a reason why websites like Sakuga Blog exist, because this information is important and people don't care until the situation affects their own anime. There is a reason why Black Clover and My Hero Academia has inconsistencies in their anime's run. There is a reason why One Piece has their pacing within the anime. There is a reason why it takes so long between each anime season and the people who typically critique parts of the anime's process are just minor voices at the tip of the iceberg. Whether it's harassment 
harassing people online for their critique or judging others harshly on their opinions and their enjoyment, there is a much better way to conversate. There is so much we can learn from each other if we were quick to listen and slow to angrily reply all the time, but the reality of it all is that it's impossible. Not everyone is considerate, not everyone is willing, not everyone will care, and at the heart of it all, nobody is required to care. But these things play into why critique towards anime and the anime community especially has become what it is now. So to wrap this up, if there is one piece of advice that I offer to anybody getting into anime especially, it's that to enjoy what you like, dislike what you will, and find people who are willing to listen to you rather than judge you, and most of all, don't be cringe. That's pretty much it for me though. As always, thank you for watching, and make sure to leave all your thoughts about critique, opinions, and anything related in the comment section down below. Stay safe out there, and I will catch you guys in the next video.